Good morning, everybody. Shalom, Rabbi. Shalom, Lev. Shalom, Mia. Shalom, Asher. All right, let's start our class today with uh, Lev's going to pray. The Larry's are going to do the Shema. And Shmuley's going to do the Ten Commandments. So that's going to pray, Lara, Shema, and Shmuley, the Ten Commandments. Thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be together today. And I ask you, Lord, um to please allow us to pay attention to the class and allow us to understand what you have for us and allow us to apply it to our lives in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. You're yeah. muted, Rabbi. Laras, do the Shema. Love me do the Shema while they're fixing that. Okay. We didn't hear you because you were muted. Shema Israel, Yehovah, Eloheinu, Yehovah, Ehad, Baruch, Shem Kevod, Mahuto, Leolam, Bayan, Hear Israel, the Lord our God is. Love the Ten Commandments. English or Hebrew? Uh, English? See. Mm. Keep going. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Do not make any idols. Before my face, do not use the name of the Lord in vain. Keep the Shabbat holy. Honor your mother and father. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not lie. And do not covet. Amen. Um, give Lev the wiggly fingers. Wiggly jiggly. Wiggly jiggly. Wiggly jiggly. Uh, all right. You got the big clap on your hand over there. All right. So now we're um, in the account and what's going on here today. Uh, so Yaakov was afraid of his brother, and he was splitting the camps, and he spent the night fighting with some man. And now we're going to he's splitting up the camp. So let's see. Lev, read ver chapter 33, verse 1 and 2, please, Lev. Yaakov raised his eyes and looked down, and there was and there was Esau coming, and 400 men with him. So Yaakov divided the children between Leah, Rachel, and the two slave girls, putting the slave girls and their children first, Leah and, and her children second, and Rachel and Yosef. Last. All right, thank you, Lev. Good read, good read. All right, let's see if we remember some words. All right, Hadassah. 
Can you tell me what the word divided means? Divided. So Yaakov divided the children. D I V I D E D. D I V I D E D. Divided like you divide like you divide some some like you divide people like you divide things in half. Like you divide. Well, you're using the word divided in the definition again, and I'm trying to understand what divided means. So tell me another definition, please. Divide means is like you, you, you split people in half. Very good. Very good. Elisheva, what does the word divided mean? Elisheva. Hello? Yeah, we hear you now. Okay, what did you say, Ellie? Mm -hmm. To separate. Separate. To separate. Very good, very good. All right. So now, let's see if there's any other words we need to look at. Hmm. Let's see. Yeshua, can you tell me? What a slave girl is, it says Leah, Rachel, and the two slave girls. Can you tell me what a slave girl is in the Bible? A slave girl is like a a woman, but it's a, it's, it's, it gets sold off. Gets sold the master, off. The master sold, sell. Sells it. Okay, very good, Yeshua. Very good. Uh, Lev, what is a slave girl? A slave girl is a is a woman that basically works works for the master. That, for the mistress or master. For the mistress or a master. Is a man or woman? Well, in this case, the slave girl is is a lady. Okay, very good. All right. So we need to know this uh, because we're looking at what's what's going on. Yaakov raised his eyes and looked out, and there was Esau coming, and four hundred men with him. So Yaakov divided, meaning he separated the children between Leah, Rachel, and the two slave girls, putting the slave girl and their children and their children first, Leah and her children second, and Rachel and Yosef last. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Shmuley, why did the slave girls go first? And their children? Why did the slave girls go first? Uh Well, why don't you think a little bit? Why don't you try to think? Think to think a little bit. He's thinking. Come on, Sammy. Just, just to say in the beginning, uh, I don't know. It's just not okay with me. Why didn't he put the slave girls first? Why didn't he put Rachel first? Why didn't he put Rachel first? Uh-huh. The girls were first? What'd you say? The girls were first? Well, why did he put the slave girls first instead of Rachel first? Why did he put 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 Rachel first? I don't know. And Shmui's default answer. I don't know. 
friend, Allie May, Allison May. Why did he put the slave girls first instead of Rachel first? If Rachel is his favorite, why does he put her first? Why didn't he put her first? So uh, Esau couldn't meet her first. Um, maybe he wanted, maybe he wanted her to be closer to him and the slave girls fur further away, maybe. So wanted Rachel to be closer to him? Yes. Okay, okay, that's uh, an answer. Victoria, what do you think? Why did he put the slave girl first instead of putting uh, Leia first? Um, I think maybe he did that because, like, he wanted, like, the adults in the back. Like, the adults like him and Rachel would be in the back and then just looking at the, like, girls in the front. Well, it says the slave girls and their children, so he's not just putting the girls in front, he's putting his other, his, some of his children up front. Well, yeah, because they're like kids, so then they won't like be behind or in the back and then they can't like see them. Well, he's splitting them into four groups. Well, two groups, but really four groups. So each, each ch child is going with their mother. He's their father. Yaakov is the father of all these children. Okay. But he's putting the, the slave girls and their children, which are his children, first. Why do you think he's putting them first instead of Rachel and Leia first? Um, maybe because, like, he... I'm not sure. Are you doing your Sammy impression? No. All right, let's see what Yeshua thinks. Yeshua, what do you think? Why do you think he's putting, why didn't he put Rachel first? She's only got, you know, the one kid, make her, her, her go first. Why, why doesn't he put her first? Because he thought that Rachel Rachel was more beautiful, so he he didn't want the beautiful to be killed, to be first, to be killed. Well, that's a that's a good answer, you know, because he didn't want the beautiful one to be killed first and on the way to last. Uh, what do you think, Lev? Um, um, sorry, that's my mind. Maybe, maybe, um, the reason why he put them up front and, um, the slave girls and maybe not Leia and Rachel. Well, the slave girls, they were, they were captives, basically. Basically, they were captives. And, and they were under Yaakov's authority. So, so he could tell them where to go because there are because all of the women are under his authority. So he can tell them where to go. Especially the slave girls. That's, that's, that's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking, why did he put why didn't he put Rachel first instead of last? What do you think? They're all under his authority. Why the order? Uh, I'm not sure why they why he did that. Maybe because maybe well it says that he loved Rachel more, so maybe he didn't Maybe he um maybe he put her in the back, maybe because also maybe she was 
maybe she would. Well, of course she was pretty, but <laughs> but maybe he. <laughs> yeah, maybe he hid her so that they wouldn't take her. Maybe. Hmm, that's a that's an interesting thought. He, he's hiding Rachel because he, she's the prettiest to him. So, yeah, uh, you're thinking he's trying to hide her so he can let the ugly ones get killed first. Kill the ugly ones first. Is that what you're thinking, Will? The this uh, the slave girls were not ugly. Well, all you said Rachel was pretty. Well, they all are. They all are. They all are. But maybe it's just that Tiago is the sister. Tiago, Rachel is the prettiest because she's his favorite. <laughs> yeah. But I'll get it. It's the milkman. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Let's see, Ellie Shaver. Ellie Shaver, why do you, why do you think he puts? How many groups did he put him in, Ellie Shaver? How many groups? Yeah. Two. Two slave girls, Leah and Rachel. How many of those? I see that same thing. And I'm not the picture. The, the two slaves, two, two. Leah and Rachel. Them. Mm. Seriously, how many is that? It's four. 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 Very good. Four. Okay, so we got four groups. All right. Mia, what do you think? I've asked everybody else. Well, I think the reason why the slave girls went first is because, you know, they were slave girls. They didn't, they had different rights than the than the than Jacob's wives. Even though slave girls were Jacob's concubines, so they're technically his wives. But they they saw they that they still held the title of slave girls. So you know the a sign a, a sign of wealth is is having servants. So they probably did more of like servants work too, other than take care of their children. So why put them first? If they're doing so much work for you, don't you want to keep them safe? I don't know. I think I think it's just to show like the prosperity because because not just his wives, maybe he could have also put his um his his other slaves too. Because the slave I guess I guess um with him because he has servants to do what he to do all that he asks them to do. I guess you'd say signifies prosper prosperity. Because because um Leia and Rachel's slave girls, they were not the only slaves that Jacob had. He had he had other servants too. Okay. Should I say probably purchased also. So you're thinking and because he purchased them, he can put them up front. Okay, so we're looking at this, and one of the things <clears throat> that we still have to realize is Yaakov is still afraid, okay? He's still afraid of his brother. After 20 years, you know, when we started out in the beginning of the week talking about in this parasha, okay? He's been away from his brother for over 20 years. Okay, the last time he saw his brother, he was mad. Now... Most people don't stay mad for that long a period of time, okay? We talked about it at the beginning of the week that, you know, you guys stay mad at your siblings for uh, a day, an hour, okay? So he's still afraid of him, and now he's splitting up his family. Okay, hi, Asher. Okay. So... Okay, so... Now he's raised his eyes and looked out. And now he's, he sees Esau coming and he's like, ah. Oh. Okay, let's see if we got that picture. He goes like this. Blink. Okay. So he's, he's got this face on him. Yako's got his face on him. And he's really afraid. Okay. So let's go back to talking about 
why Esau, you know, we still have the Megal, we still distance off. Okay, let's go. Let's go back to Yeshua. Yeshua, why do you think Esau is coming with the four hundred men? We talked about this in the it was either Monday or Tuesday, but. Well, why do you think he's coming with the 400 men? Why isn't he coming with his family? Because he thought that Jacob was coming with 400 men. No, Esau was. Jacob has got four, four families. He's got slaves and wives and children. But Esau, as you look in verse 1, it says Esau coming and 400 men with him. So why do you think Esau is coming with 400 men? Doesn't he have any children of his own? Doesn't he want to bring his family to meet his brother and their family, their cousin? And he, say, he, has, he has his own family. I guess he just wants to protect them. So he's coming with 400 men? He thinks his brother... You think Yaakov is going to kill him? Yeah. Mm, what do you think, Hadassah? Why do you think Esau was coming with 400 men and not his, his family? You know, he's married and he's got him some children. And uh, why do you think Esau's coming with four... Whoop, my fingers disappeared. Four... Oh, there's my... Ah, look at that. <laughs> My finger disappeared. Ah. 400 men. Okay. Tadasa, why do you think? I think that he brought 400 men is because he doesn't want his he doesn't want his family to be dead. Okay, so Esau was coming to kill his brother? No. He came to see how him how he's going. So he's bringing 400 of his, of his friends to come meet him? Huh? Yeah. So Esau is bringing 400 of his friends to come meet his brother? Mm, yeah. Oh, he must have been on Facebook. Okay. 400 close friends. Okay. Let's see. Uh... Victoria, what do, you, what do you think? Why, why is he still bringing 400 men instead of bringing his family? Yaakov's bringing his family, but Esau's bringing 400 men. What do you think? Um, okay, so, isn't, like, Esau's, like, okay, so Yaakov, wait, doesn't Yaakov right. think that Esau <laughs> is going to, like, kill him, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's what Yaakov thinks. Yeah. So, um... For 20 years. He hasn't seen his brother in over 20 years. And the last time he saw his brother, his brother was mad at him. But, you know, now they're a little bit older. You know, in 20 years, you're going to grow up, right? Okay, so in 20 mm -hmm. years, you, you grow up and, you know, you can still be mad at your sibling after 20 years. Mm -hmm. Um... I think that like Esau's so I think that Esau thinks that like Yaakov is going to like so I think wait I think wait. Esau oh. thinks that Yaakov <laughs> I think Esau thinks that Yaakov like wants that oh my gosh I'm confusing myself. Um, <laughs> so, um, so Yaakov thinks that Esau wants to kill him, right? Correct. So I think that Esau like probably knows that, and so he thinks that Yaakov is going to like bring also like four hundred men. So that's why he's like going to war. I guess that's why he's going to bring four hundred men. But that's not what Yaakov was doing. All right, so you're, you're thinking that Esau is bringing 400 men because he thinks his brother Yaakov is going to bring 400 men and try to kill Esau. Is that what you're thinking? 
Yeah, yeah. But not the like killing part. I just think like Yakov, like Aesop thinks that Yakov will just like want to defend himself in like a fight, but he doesn't want to kill his brother. Okay, let's see what Ali May thinks. Ali May. Okay, so we've had all this journey. The, the family is separated into a couple of groups here, Leia, Rachel, uh, Rachel and the two uh, slave girls and the children are with their parents. And Esau is still coming with 400 men. Why isn't Esau bringing his family instead of 400 men? Allie. Um, probably because I I think I think I agree with Vicky on this one that it that he um he brought the four hundred men because he he knew that um Yako thought that he was going to come attack him. So Esau, what you're telling me is Esau is thinking that Yako is going to attack Esau. So that's why Esau is bringing all these men to go into the fight, Allie May? Well, yeah, but like, I mean, like, try and defend himself. Like, like Yako would try to defend himself and his family. Okay. All right. Lev, what do you think, Lev or Baloney? Maybe because um maybe because um Esau didn't want them to get hurt or anything because maybe he got he was scared also. Say that again? I didn't understand it. Maybe he was scared also. Esau? Maybe maybe Esau thought that Yaakov was coming with an army also. Why would he think that? I was thinking if the Lord is blessing him. He knows that the Lord's blessing Yaakov. How does he know that? They haven't talked in 20 years. Because of Boom. All because, because of all that he had with him. But he hasn't met him yet. Like, oh, like, like, remember, remember, remember the gift that um, Esau brought the I mean, that Esau got from Yaakov before meeting him. Also, we need to remember the gift that Yaakov gave Esau before meeting him. So, um, so Esau knows that he knows that he has a lot of stuff. So maybe he got scared. Okay, what do you think, Mia? It's all good because we're leading up to something. That's why I'm asking everybody. Mia, what do you think? I agree with what Lev says is that um, it, that Esau saw how prosperous Yaakov was, you know, in the gift that he that he he received from Yaakov before meeting being his brother. Um, so so maybe he may he may have seen how 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 the Lord blessed Yaakov. And so maybe he was he was kind of afraid like like what's or I don't know maybe maybe he was also maybe a little afraid like what's I don't know what what's gonna happen now to me if Yaakov's gonna he I mean he probably wants to see his brother even though he was mad at him for a very long time and probably also forgot about the anger but I still wasn't very happy over what had happened before Yaakov left so I think um. Maybe Esau's like me. Maybe Esau didn't bring his family because he didn't know what was going to happen. Okay, very good, then, Ali May. Also, Esau knows that he got the blessing as well from his father. 
that, that Yaakov got the blessing. Yeah. But that was 20 years ago. Yeah, but yeah. still, he got the blessing, um, meaning that he's going to be, he he's the um, son of the promise, meaning that he's going to be the one getting the birthright, the one getting all the blessings and everything. Okay. All right. So this is all good thoughts. The, re the reason we're talking about this, uh, one of the life lessons that we're learning this week also is because we're going to see something called reconciliation. Okay. They're, they're going to make up. Okay. Sometimes the devil tries to throw confusion into us. Okay. And it gives you a bad report. Okay. A bad report. Or you think it's a bad report. You don't have enough information to really know. So Yaakov is thinking, oh, my goodness, 400 men. He's going to kill me, blah, 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 blah. And he starts, he starts freaking out. He says, ah, he's going to kill me. So I'll, I'll separate the families and he'll kill some of the slave girls and my children with them. And But Rachel and Leah, they'll be able to escape. Okay. The devil is always into making you try to believe a bad report, okay? Without enough information, you have to investigate before you make a plan, okay? You have to investigate before you make a plan, right? You have to pray. First thing we do, we talked about this earlier, because remember Yaakov prayed after he already made a plan to separate the family, right? Does everybody remember that from Tuesday? Okay, so he already made a plan, but he didn't pray first. They asked Jehovah for his will or what was going on, revealed to him. So many times when you, can, when you pray, and you can ask Jehovah to uncover things, to uncover things so that you can know how to make a better decision. Okay, so Yaakov is worried, and he's, he's making all these things. And Jehovah hasn't told him that, you know, they're not going to die. Okay? He's all worried and stuff like that. So Yaakov is making these plans. He's separating his family. He's thinking that some of them are about to die. Esau, on the other hand, we don't know what he's thinking because we haven't heard a word from his mouth. Okay? But he's coming with a very big grouping of men. So that could scare you. Okay? He's coming with 400 men. All right. So let's see what happens. Let's see here. All right. Uh, Allie May, read verse Genesis, verse 33, verse 3 and 4. Then he himself passed on ahead of them and prostrated himself on the ground seven times before approaching his brother. Esau ran to meet him, hugged him, threw his arms around his neck, and kissed him, and they wept. Okay, very good reading, I may. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see here. Shmui, can you tell me what the word prostrated means? Prostrated. Before prostrated means something. Well, prostrated means I have gone. I forgot to think. Think. He forgot. Yeah. I don't know. He doesn't think before he answers. Are you tired, Shmuel? Yeah. No. Come on, you should know what the word prostrated is. We've gone over this word before. The song says, I come. Say it again, I didn't, you got cut out. The song said, come drop and fly. No, this doesn't have anything to do with the sun. Hadassah, what do you think prostrated means? That you that you split um, some of the people in two um, away. You split it. No, prostrated doesn't mean to divide. 
Yeshua, what do you think? No, let me go on another young one before I go to you. Ellie Sheva, what, you, what does it mean to prostrate? You paying attention, Ellie? What does the word prostrate mean? We've gone over this word. You lay down and you put your face on the floor. You're tired? No, she says when you lay down and you put your face on the floor. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Yeshua, tell me what prostrated means. Like you bow down. Okay, you just, you're standing there and you bow. For forgiveness. For forgiveness? So, no, to explain to me what prostrated is. You bow down. How, how, how are you bowing down? Explain to me what you would look like when you're prostrate. Like when you see the Lord in heaven, you you had to like show him that that you are are obeying that you're not like people that don't listen? Well, that's not really giving me a good definition of the word prostrate. Now, right, let's see what Lev thinks. Lev, can you explain to the class what prostrate means? We should all know this word. We've gone over it a bunch of times. Prostrating is to bow. I think Full prostration is to lay flat on the ground like a pancake. <laughs> and bowing is just going on your knees and like putting your hands on the floor and not like laying your head down on the floor. You're you're just doing it a little above your hand. So you're so bowing on, on the floor. floor. You're kneeling or you're standing? You're kneeling. You're kneeling. Okay, you're kneeling. Okay. Hadassah, repeat what uh, what Lev said. It, um, that, um, prostrated means it like you um, bow and your knees, like you put your knee so so respect. Prostrated means to show respect on your knees. Okay. All right, now, now that we all understand what prostrate means, okay, we should all know that word very simply, okay? Verse 33, then he, he himself passed on ahead of them, meaning the groups of people that he just separated, and prostrated himself on the ground seven times before approaching his brother. Victoria, why do you think he prostrated himself seven times before approaching his brother? Um, I think because, like, he was first, like, asking God, like, well, not asking, like, thanking God that he got to see his brother again, and, um, it was also, like, showing his brother that, like, he's coming in peace, and, like, there's no war. Okay, so he's coming in peace, there's no war. Okay. All right, we're getting closer, we're getting closer. That was pretty good. We're still missing some information. Now, Allison May, why did he prostrate himself on the ground seven times before approaching his brother? I think he does that because he's scared and he and he doesn't want his brother to kill him. Because that's what he thinks he's going to do. So Yaakov is a chicken? The One of our patriarchs is a chicken? Basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. Well, no, that doesn't that doesn't go well. He's a chicken. All right. So let's go to Mia. So Ali May is saying that Yaakov is a chicken. Do you believe Mia that Yaakov is a chicken? Well, if he were a chicken, he would have ran away. Even though he was probably still afraid, seeing that maybe Esau didn't come, like, and his men were all armed, like, with weapons and everything, he may have calmed down. And remember, 
if he were a chicken, would he go in front? No. He would have run all the way to the back. And he would be hiding. He would be hiding with the camel. No. He would be hiding behind Rachel. <laughs> because he put Rachel in the back. True. <laughs> so if he wa if he I can tell he's not a chicken because for me, chicken like if someone was a chicken means that they're a coward. Even though Yaku's probably afraid, he still went forward. Because he, he does not want to show weakness in his family, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so... And and give courage to the rest of, the, of his family. Or so I don't think they even know about Esau and what had happened between the two brothers. Okay, so you don't think he's a chicken. Uh, you think he's, he's manning up now. Okay, so... Now, so you you disagree with Ali May that he's a chicken. All right. So now we get to the next question, Mia. Why did he prostrate himself on the ground seven times before getting to his brother? I think to show the reverence that he has for Esau, because even though Yaakov has the blessing and is basically considered the firstborn, because he has the first the birthright too. Even though that he probably shown he's probably prostrating himself to to show that Esau um is in charge kind of thing where Yaakov is making himself lower than Esau because he's showing respect and reverence towards Esau to see if to see if Esau who might still be a little upset but not to the point of killing his brother We'll see that Yaakov has changed, maybe. So you're thinking that Yaakov is yielding himself to Esau? You mean he's making Esau the older by prostrating himself on the ground, maybe? No, he was doing it to God. Because because he's 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 sh he's yielding himself to God. How's he yielding himself to God if he's bound to his brother? If he went to meet Esau and prostrate himself, then he'd be showing reverence to Esau. But no, it says that as he's walking over to Esau, he prostrates seven times. Right, he's prostrating himself to his brother seven times before getting to him. Then he himself passed on ahead of them and prostrated himself on the ground seven times before approaching his brother. He saw Bran to meet him, so he's prostrating himself before his brother. Doesn't say he's prostrating himself before the Lord. I don't know. Okay. All right, so he's prostrating himself on the ground before his brother, because he's meeting his brother. See, they're coming, you gotta think they're coming like this. So we don't see him saying to God, you know, anything. He's, they're coming and he goes ahead of the four groups. So we've got the four groups of people, okay? The two and two, okay? So now Yaakov comes from behind to go to the front. Now, look at it, the two parts. Yaakov, Esau. Are coming, okay. Yaakov, Esau are coming. Yaakov bows to Esau, okay, seven times before he meets his brother. When you bow to somebody, you're yielding to them, to their authority. But Yaakov has the birthright. His brother sold him the birthright. You know, legitimately sold the birthright, okay. Then he didn't tell his father that was a bad thing way back, you know, I think it was two weeks ago or, or last week, okay? He should have told his father. And then his father, you know, it was two weeks ago. And his father could have determined whether or not he he wanted to bless Yaakov as the older, okay? He could have brought the both boys in and heard the story and made a determination because he's the father. And he was the one that was going to hand down the blessing, okay? So now, after all this, all this worry, we have in verse 4, Bereshit 33, verse 4. 
He saw Brand to meet him, hugged him, threw his arms around his neck, and kissed him, and they wept. So we have something called reconciliation. Okay, let's see. Victoria, do you know what reconciliation is? Um, no, but I think it's like um, when um, you like you forgive someone, I guess, and then you guys like get back to being friends. Maybe. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pre pretty good. Uh, good guess. Okay. Allie Mae, what do you think reconciliation means? Um, I know that I know what it means. It just it's hard to explain. Um, we'll <clears throat> um, Said Victoria gave it, uh, gave us a pretty good answer. What did Victoria say? Victoria said that um, like the two friends, they it's like they got into a fight and they they made up and became oh. friends again. So what's reconciliation? Um. I guess it would mean like making up between two people, like mm -hmm. uh, like apologizing for each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you see in verse four something called reconciliation. He so ran to meet him, so that means he he was coming with him four hundred men. Um, you would think they were on horses, but okay, so he must have one way or another. He's, he's on the ground. He's walking right now. He's running to meet his brother in verse 4. He hugged him, threw his arms around his neck, and kissed him, and they wept. Okay? So, remember before, about 20 minutes ago, I was talking about not believing a bad report. Okay? Yaakov made this whole thing up in his head and looked at information in front of him without not really knowing what the information meant. Okay, he saw us coming with 400 men. Okay, he saw us coming with 400 men. He's all worried, so he makes this plan without praying. First of all, without praying, and then he he makes this plan, and he thinks his brother's going to kill him because the last time they talked. The last time he heard, his brother was very angry with him. Okay, but it seems by Esau running to meet him when he finally saw him, hugged him. If you're angry with somebody, you're not going to hug them. You're not going to throw their, your arms around their neck and kiss him and weep. Well, why weep? Why cry? Victoria, why cry? Wait. It's almost the end of the class, and we forgot to do our alley man. Everybody do your alley man. Uh, stretch out. Everybody stretch out. Okay. All right. So, why did they weep, Victoria? Why? And it says they wept. Why did they weep? Too many they were crying? probably, oh yeah, they were, um, they were, they were like happy tears, like, they were excited, they were, like, happy that they, like, saw each other again, and so, yeah. When you're happy, you cry? I thought when you're sad, you cry. Yeah, most, um, like, when you're, 
laughing like too much, you start crying <laughs> as well. Do you cry when you see somebody? Uh, if you miss them like a long time, yeah. Okay, Ali, maybe. Why are these two guys crying? It says they wept. Why are they crying? Well, see, if you if you miss somebody a whole bunch, then you sometimes you cry. Like if it's somebody you really really love or really like. And you haven't seen them for a long time. Sometimes you cry when you see them. Why? Why? Because you're happy to see them. Happiness causes people to cry. Well, I mean, like Victoria said, sometimes you laugh until you cry. You laugh until you cry. Okay. Like. If how long has it been since you saw your brother? Um, he came to see me last year, I believe. It was out of the year before. It was it was one or two years ago, but he said maybe he can come back for my birthday next year. Are you gonna cry when you see him? No, I'm gonna be like, yay, RJ. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a big person to cry when I see somebody. Though, I mean, some people are, and some people aren't. Okay, so Yaakov and Esau are a bunch of crybabies. Yes, I don't know. Okay, Mia, what do you think? What? Why do you think they're crying? They're, they're happy to see each other. They're happy to see each other. When you're happy to see somebody, you cry? Yeah, like sometimes it's like you're, you haven't seen him for a long time. Yeah. Okay. So Mia says you cry when you haven't seen somebody in a long time. Victoria says uh, sometimes you cry. Allie Mae says I'm not going to cry if I, if I'm not seeing my brother for two years. I'm not a crier, she says. Okay. So the whole thing here is the devil wanted to cause worry, okay? And one, we always should seek Jehovah and Yeshua to believe what we're seeing, okay? Uncover, like I said earlier, uncover, okay? Because here, Yaakov made this whole big plan, okay? And nothing happened from it. So let's go down to the bottom, bottom of the page. Let's read Luke. We've got a few minutes here. Let's read. Mia, read Luke 15, 19 through 21 with feeling. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your higher workers. So he got up and started back to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran and threw his arms around him and kissed him warmly. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Okay, thank you, Mia. Good read, good read. All right, uh, this is about the prodigal son. The prodigal son didn't want to live in his father's house. He didn't like the rules. He liked to live like a pagan. So... He went to go live like a pagan and found out that that really wasn't that good. And the Lord uh, chastised him and he lost all his money. And then he was feeding pigs and not, he was starving to death and he was willing to eat what the pigs were going to eat. Okay. But in verse 20, the father sees his son. So he got up and started back to his father. But while it was still a long way off. His father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran into his arms around him and kissed him warmly. Victoria, what is pity? P I T Y. Um, it's like, um, I'm not sure how to explain it. Um, how do you explain pity? Um, It 
looked like. Well, explain it in context of what we just read in verse 20. Um, okay, so. Pity and emotion? I guess it could be. It's it's not an emotion. It's like, um, I honestly have no idea how to explain pity. Okay. Well, Ali May, Ali May, when do you try to explain pity? Okay. So pity would mean like in this kind of context that he felt bad for him. What do you mean he felt bad for him? Like he saw him and he saw that he was starving and that he didn't have he didn't have any money left and he felt bad for him. He 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 um he like He wanted to help him. Wanted to help him. Okay, it's pretty good. Mia had her hand up. Mia, you get the last word today. The father had pity over his son. I mean, first pity means like to feel to feel bad for someone or be sympathetic toward them. So, so the so the father here he felt he saw how 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 his son was like his condition. Like he must have been starved. Yeah, he was probably starved. And probably also, probably not wearing proper clothing. Maybe, maybe, maybe wearing like maybe clothes that are probably torn up or I don't know. I mean, maybe the father, <coughs> the father felt pity because he he may have, he saw his, his sons may his son maybe was in a poor condition than when he left. Okay, very good, very good class this week, everybody. Good ex explanation, Mia. He felt sadness. He felt sorrow, okay? So he felt sorry for his son. That's a pity. So he, he ran to him. All right, the end of our class this week. I'm thinking of a number from 1 to 10. Uh, Shmui had his hand up first. Shmui? What is it? What number? Seven. You got it. Yeah. All right. So, Shmuley, pray for us. Thank you, Lord, for this day and for giving us this faith. Help us for, for learning more. Please make us pay attention. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep warm. Throw the bottle away. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the coffee up.